Hello everyone and welcome along to another video. This is uh, me fitting the Royal Enfield, or sorry, the Enfield Precision NCAN, the uh, recently released, onto my uh, Hunter 350 um, Royal Enfield. The uh, the NCANs have only just been released and available from Hitchcock's Motorcycles. Um, I went over pretty much the day after they went on sale and picked up two, one for Paul my mate and one for me and we both fitted them pretty much around about the same time so this is me just removing the uh, the heat shield that sits above the um, the end can it needs to be removed to gain access to the uh, to the bolts underneath which holds the um, which clamps the end can in place and also you need to retain it to uh, fit into the uh, to the new end can so that's just two 10 mil um, bolts to remove, I also say it's a 10 mil socket to remove them and then just set that aside. Next thing to be removed will be the uh, heat shield that covers the uh, lower part of the exhaust pipe. So same again, just removing the two bolts. Dead easy to get at. There's nothing complicated about this job at all. Um, tools, you need a socket set with a 10 mil, a 13 mil and 12 mil sockets, a 13 mil and a 12 millimeter spanner, and a four millimeter Allen key if you want to remove the uh, the baffles, and that's all you need really. And we'll see the baffles um, being removed a bit later in this video. So it's just removing that bottom heat shield. Once that's out of the way, we can get at the um, get at the clamp. So there's the clamp bolt now, um, just releasing that, it's a 13 mil socket which uh, was to loosen that off. So that's released now, so that uh, will allow the, the, uh, the end can to be removed. Now there's two bolts here, the rear one I've removed the uh, the nut and bolt on this but you don't really have to but you do have to loosen it because it clamps the rear um, or the the, the exhaust um, mounting flange it actually fits behind the rear part of this and, it's, and it clamps it in place you just really you just need to release the pressure this bolt you do need to completely remove as I say, the previous bolt that I removed, you just need to release the pressure on that one. Just loosen it. And this one needs to come completely out. So that's bolt out. And then it's just a case of uh, twisting the end can off then slight pull and it's away. No pressure there. This was a new bike so I didn't expect there to be any pressure there. So straight off. And then just having a look at it. Interestingly you see a little spot of rust underneath. Now this is bike's never really been it's never been out in the wet. Um, but in a minute as I spin it around you can just see that bit of rust at the front there. So um, yeah not the best quality I don't think. And this is the new uh, the new end can coming out now. I say, pick these up from Hitchcock's. Um, I'll uh, I'll drop the price in the description below because I can't remember the top of my head at the moment. And it is a there's not a lot of difference apart from the logo on being on there, and I believe this is fully stainless steel. Um, and the baffles are in on this. We'll uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. And what we'll notice with this is that there's a a f quite a free flow the hole goes straight through there's no constriction within the exhaust it's a narrow hole but it does go straight the way through um, which helps with the free flow one would envisage you can see just there there was the uh, the hole that goes straight the way through which you don't get in the one that I've removed so here we're just loosening the clamp And then uh, pretty straightforward. 
slides on. I subsequently removed this and just applied a little bit of exhaust seal. Uh, it doesn't need it, but uh, it's for belts and braces. And then the bolt back in. And then that bracket back on. That's the uh, that's the uh, a heel guard. But as I say, you don't necessarily need to completely remove that. Just loosen it. That's a lesson learned from uh, from doing the installation. It is very very straightforward install. Yeah, so just uh, loosely tightening it, just to get everything lined up and set into position. It's finger tight, and then just locking those two uh, two bolts up. Yeah, no, uh, no real issues getting the spanner into the. Uh, in behind there so this really is a very straightforward install and just uh, tightening them up and that's the two bolts Been secured. And just, re just tightening the lower one. That's done. Next job is uh, I always like to apply um, ACF 50 whenever I can get access to stuff that I'm not probably not going to see again um, very quickly. I'll, I'll, I'll like to give just a a coat of ACF 50 to these sort of difficult to reach places just to put that at, at added extra layer of protection um, where we can so yeah just giving that a bit of a bit of a light coating and then uh, just going to tighten up the clamp now You don't need any spanners or anything. It's just a, a one, um, one sort of bolt mechanism that just locks it in place. I'm going to do it actually finger tight, and then just uh, just a tight. Yeah, well, I, I put I extended put my uh, extension bar on here just to give myself that extra little bit of rather than you know struggle get the right tools to do the job and then get tighten that up and that's that done so that's the end can on really for all intents and purposes two bolts are in secured and it's just now a case of starting to refit the heat shield so I'm just adding again a bit more ACF 50 because this is going to be uh, covered over again I like to apply my ACF 50 with a brush a brush or a cloth um, I find a brush is, a, is, is quite an easy way of getting it on and then sort of just wipe over them with a cloth but, uh, it's, uh, I find you can get into a bit, you know, places a little bit easier with a brush with a paintbrush that is so that's given that a bit of a coat and I've done the same on the inside of the heat shield given that a uh, coating of ACF 50 as well and let's just put that back on with the two securing bolts. It's, it's nice and easy. There's nothing complicated about this at all. I think I've spotted a little bit of a... Maybe a bit of missing... Uh, paint or something there so I thought I'd give it an extra brush in belts and braces and 
and then I've just tightened those two on. And that's the, uh, the lower heat shield back on. And then a bit more ACF 50, just on the uh, just on the front of the shield. And now we're back to fitting the uh, done the same again here. Give that a coating of ACF 50 on the inside, and we just. Uh, Two bolts to secure it onto the uh, onto the new end can. Nice and straightforward. There we go. Just tighten them up again, and that. Is pretty much the job done, really. And so you're maintaining the look of the bike because uh, you're keeping the. Uh, There's not really any difference with in the appearance of the uh, of the two end cans. Um, the only thing that gives this one away, if, if you spot it, is the logo and the baffles that you don't have in the uh, in the box standard pipe. And that's the job done. And all ready to have uh, to do a sound check now. So we'll do the sound check. And now what we'll do is baffles out, just to see, uh, have a listen to the difference in the, uh, in the exhaust notes with the baffles in and the baffles out. There's very, nothing really to that baffle at all. And then here we go, baffles out. And there we go. So I um, hope you found this video useful. Um, it is a, a great uh, mod to the bike. Um, we'll see what performance delivers um, in, the, in the future. Um, but I uh, hope you found it useful. If you did enjoy it, please consider subscribing. Um, I'm going to try and do a few more videos like this. Um, as I say, Please leave any comments, questions um, below, and I'll uh, I'll respond to them accordingly. So uh, until next time, uh, I'll say to a bit, and thanks for watching.